Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are with game three of uh, day two of the qualifying matches uh, for SKL. So we have uh, the Fellowship of the Nerds versus ADP Gaming. Um, so we got a NAR coming up for the first ban. So I'm definitely saying that's a target ban towards Spider Phenom. He's had two great games back to back on that champion. Nidalee ban coming out as well for uh, ADP Gaming, and then uh, Sejuani ban coming out for. Uh, Fellowship of the Nerds, so it looks like they might just be banning out what really worked for ADP Gaming in the last game there. Um, Vayne, Skarner, still pretty, uh, pretty standard as well as the bans go. Skarner very strong with the objective control. Vayne just a good carry in terms of uh, taking down those tanks with the stacks. Uh, very mobile as well. So just a strong AD carry choice in terms uh, of the meta right now. So we're going to have to wait and see what that final ban is going to be for uh, ADP Gaming. Yeah, definitely good to ban the Skarner there. Just an overall strong jungler, and then the rest are target bans. The Aurelia coming out last ban for ADP Gaming. We're going to have to see what Fellowship of the Nerds really prioritizes. Luckily, we've seen both of ADP's gaming games today, so we do definitely know what kind of champions they like to play. As far as Fellowship of the Nerds, we're kind of in the dark right now, but I'm very curious to see if we're gonna, what we're going to get pulled out here and if ADP is going to look for another Wombo combo type team comp. So, yeah, Spider Phenom, he's, uh, he played NAR those last two games. We're going to have to see really what he can, he can also bring out to the team, whether they can uh, find something else to combo up there, as well as if they can find just another uh, comp there. Lol is Lol played two different laners there, played very well, had an Oriana game, Morgana game. Uh, still haven't seen kind of what Fellowship of the Nerds is able to pull out here on stream. They have played their two games, so both these teams right now are 2-0. So these guys are actually going to be going into the next round of the qualifying matches. This is just to determine more who's first, who's second place. So we got a Braum coming out first pick for Fellowship of the Nerds. Um, all over, been a very contested pick. He's a very strong support right now, offers a lot of CC, uh, a lot of front line uh, for the team. He is definitely a strong pick right now. Yeah, just overall great CC. I'm very curious what they're going to back up to counterplay this. We, I have heard rumors that my boy Baby, Baby Trog is a Draven main. So, I mean, I'll be looking for that. Tom Kench coming out again with the Jinx. Worked very well for them in the first game. Tom Kench being a beast in that bot lane. Very well, could go top lane, could replace that NAR pick. We'll have to see where ADP decides to stick him this game. Yeah, ADP Gaming, they uh, unbenched the Kench here. Uh, again, very flexible pick. Uh, Jinx, a very good late game carry. So we're going to have to see which way they take this, whether they go with a protect the carry combo, or if they round it out with more than one damage threat. It's Vlad is being hovered here for Fellowship of the Nerves. Uh, I mean, a very strong AP caster in the top lane, uh, but they can also go mid lane too. So, I mean, not showing too many cards here, as well as hovering the Sivir. Very well rounded AD carry, but oh, they might go with the Grogus. Even more front line uh, for Fellowship of the Nerds. Uh, very strong. He's got a lot of CC built into that kit, as well as with the Cinder Hall. He's going to be a very strong, tanky jungler. With Skarner and Sejuani taken out, it is a smarter thing to pick up the jungler that they want. Since they already know that ADP has an AD carry, the saver pick definitely not contested. They can wait, pick whatever AD carry they want. Getting, Making sure they have a strong jungler is probably very good for them right now, just the way that champ select is working out. Grog is very strong. They have a lot of disengage with the Braum, with the Grogus, can also be used as engage. Be very good, especially with this Jinx. The Tom Kench, very excited to see. Not really sure. Haven't seen enough in the bot lane Tom Kench if he goes down there to see how that matchup plays out. But ADP Gaming taking a long time with this pick. Definitely thinking it out. They will have last pick to counter pick whatever they want. And they might lock in the Diana Renekton. And it is picked in. Very exciting. I mean, as far as it goes, we could see Diana be mid lane, be top. I really like ADP, always keeping these flex picks, kind of keeping us on our toes. Another thing to note is uh, ADP Gaming has for sure locked in a jungler. Uh, I mean, that could be a Diana jungle of all things, so it's still very open to interpretation where that one's going to end up going. As um, Fellowship of the Nerds still has yet to pick their AD carry here, as well as the potential top or mid laner. 
uh, as Zed is going to be locked in here. So a very high damage comp with the Tristana, with the Vlad, with the Zed. So they're looking to do a lot of damage, burst people out extremely fast. Uh, that's going to be pretty scary as a Jinx who's going to have to just be a uh, real... Uh, you know, damage threat for her team as well, and uh, but good front line so far from ADP Gaming. Fellowship of the Nerds scales very well. I do like their team comp. They have good team fighting, but they can also do the one three one push. Vlad and Zed being very effective split pushers, but they also have Gragas and Brom to do the disengage when Tristan is pushing. They do lock in Lala's Lol picking up Oriana. He did very well in that first game. Great alties. We're going to have a Diana jungle. We're going to have a Tom Kench in the bot lane. This is very exciting. I'm very much looking forward to this. Unbench the Kench. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they'd go with the off meta pick here. They go with the Diana. Uh, they go with uh, in, in the jungle. As well as Zed picked up for Fellowship of the Nerds. So, Zed actually did get buffed. The uh, delay to be able to go back to your shadow after your ultimate was reduced down to 0.5. Uh, seconds now rather than the full second so that's definitely gonna help him getting in and out bursting out that jinx so we're gonna have to see whether they can catch him in that um, it's more gonna just be who can do the most damage because there's a lot of damage coming out from both of these comps so we're just gonna be taking a short break here folks as um, we're gonna be loading into the game so don't go anywhere we'll be right back
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to game three of the Qualifiers Bracket D. We do have Fellowship of the Nerds versus ADP Gaming. Let's get her rolling. We've unbenched the Kench. We're going to have to see which team is going to take first, which team is going to take second out of this bracket. It does matter a little bit in the placing for the brackets for next week, but both teams definitely eyeing up for that first place. Welcome. So let's check out these, uh, these level one... Uh, items that are off the bat here. Oriana going with a lot of pots here. She went with a crystalline flask as well as a health, some health pots, some mana pots. She went with all of them there. Uh, so yeah, just really looking to uh, stay in the lane for as long as possible, get some uh, creep advantage as well as uh, just, you know, a pressure advantage just from staying there for as long as possible, pushing the wave in if Zed ever does have to back. Zed starts with the standard uh, longsword three pots there just to uh, get as much damage. It'll also boost his uh, speed that he's able to get into the brutalizer, into that Yomu's. Uh, it's going to really push that farther. So Vlad does go with the cloth armor and the pots. Uh, it's a pretty good start just into the Renekton here just because he's going to be able to go in on him in the very early levels. So he's going to want to be able to, you know, survive through that. Renekton level 2, he's going to want to dive in there, level 3. Up until level 9, Vlad's actually going to be at quite a disadvantage to this lane, especially if Spider Phenom can be as dominant as he was on that Gnar. So we're going to have to see whether he's um, as good at a, a melee champion as he was at a ranged one. Very excited to see this mid lane. I know a lot of people pick Orianna actually into the Zed. You can trade quite well using your e-shield and then just using that auto passive and just going 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 command protect really making it easy for them to trade with a lot of sustain we do see however hard blow going in trading a little bit with spider phenom that lane is going to be very very scary for the vladimir level two all in very possible for the renekton very strong in those few early levels it takes Vlad a while about level nine to really start dealing some damage and we're gonna have to keep an eye on this mid lane see if Zed's able to keep up with Oriana with all that sustain Tom Kench taking a lot of damage here getting hit by the winner's bite they got a couple stacks of concussive blow we're gonna see how well they can trade here Jinx has the da or has the range right now to deal with that Tristana until later in the game that's for sure so one of the interesting matchups I'm gonna be looking at throughout this game is uh, it's gonna be in that jungle actually I want to see how well this Diana jungle pans out uh, I mean, this ADP Gaming, they did have a lot of wombo combos. Oh, as there's a nice level 2 trade here in the mid lane, actually, between the Orion and the Zed. Uh, having a lot of damage coming out for both, but I mean, out of, in terms of pot wars, uh, the Orion is going to have a lot more sustain there. So we're going to have to see, they're probably just going to chug a bunch of them and uh, get right back up to full health. But again, back to that jungle. I'm really curious to see if ADP Gaming really utilizes the mobility of the Diana and the Oriana wombo combo potential there. To get Diana into that fight, pop a good shockwave, and just decimate Fellowship of the Nerds. But it's going to take a lot of coordination and a lot of communication between uh, the players there to see if they can really pull that one off. So I'm excited to see how that one pans out once we get to the mid to the late game, once the team fights start happening here. But so far, uh, pretty good trades coming out from both sides. Jungle clear is going a little bit in the favor of Diana, clearing a lot faster than Grog is here. Neither one of them taking the scuttles. I don't quite understand. It's, it's free gold. You get good vision off of it, and it doesn't deal any damage. It's an easy camp to clear when you're low, and you just quickly grab the gold, take it, go here. Tom Kench trading a little bit with the bomb. Baby Trog and Chaz Good doing very well, putting a lot of damage onto this Tom Kench and the Jinx here. Trying to keep them in check as last game. They got going quite a bit. We do see Diana heading top here. Not sure she's going to be able to get a gank. Just clearing the Scuttle Crab, like we said. That free gold, easy vision. Staying on top of it. But Renekton getting an early lead on this Vlad. Definitely no surprise there. But Tristana pushing in the Jinx. Hopefully they're going to be able to keep up in CS. She is falling a little bit behind. But Diana sneaking in through the lane here. We'll have to see if she's able to land a successful gank. He does have pool, however. Not going to be really forced to use his flash if he does step up. Have to see. They do go in. The pull-in comes. The pool. Is he going to be able to land the stun out of the pool? Not enough. Not enough for the Ruthless Brother. However, we do see Grog is coming. The early flash. Flash Grog is body slam. Zed goes in the ignite. And the shadow slash. Is it enough? Just throw the shuriken to pick up first blood. 
that couldn't have come at a better time for Zed. He ran out of pots, so I mean, he wasn't going to be able to stay in that lane much longer as uh, Orianna still had a, a few stacks on her flask, so she was going to be able to heal up, get some more mana, and punish the Zed a little bit more. So that was perfect timing in terms of uh, items left as well as just the amount of how much longer Zed could have stayed in that lane. So that's going to help him push him a little bit further there. He's going to get the Brutalizer right away, which is definitely going to help for that damage. So picks up another, as well as uh, another Longsword, and another uh, pot there. Oriana may be flashing a little too early there. Gragas had not used any abilities. I know she was scared from him flanking from the side, didn't have vision. But flash before that body slam was even initiated then made it easy for Gragas to just flash body slam class, slow her down, and they were able to just convert on that, grab the kill, putting, giving Zed a little edge in that lane. As far as bot lane going, Tristana, a bit of an advantage in the CS department, almost up about 10 creeps here, but very good trading back and forth. Jinx with the XP advantage, however, I believe they started Gromp per usual. That's kind of ADP-esque to do. Top lane, Vlad down a bit of CS after that gank. They kind of pushed him out of the lane. He's running the cloth in five pots. We'll have to see if it's enough sustained to get him to that level nine, stay safe, and then start taking over that lane. Oriana goes again with a lot of pots and picks up the Fiendish Codex to get some damage as well. Some CER, move that ball around a little bit more there. So I would guess that Diana is going to make her way towards that mid lane sometimes here, but it looks like they actually are rotating around to drag and picking up an early one at only seven minutes into the game. Uh, great play so far from ADP Gaming picking that up, but uh, yeah. They are getting collapsed here. Fellowship of the Nerds do catch on here. We do have a teleport down by Spider Neem Phenom. Oh, the Zed ulties out of the Shockwave. Zed trying to stay alive, though they do take him down. They do pick up Dragon as well. Renekton going in. He does have the concussive blow stacks. They do blow the Diana catching the Q, but doesn't have her ulti to jump. They are chasing down the Braum. Does have one stack of Devour so far. They do take him down, and they get Dragon as well as two kills. Great play by ADP Gaming there, but you do have to give Jay Fraser props for dodging out of that shockwave with his death mark. So that was a good time for um, Fellowship of the Nerds to be able to come down there. I mean, they uh, they had the uh, the Brutalizer, the, but ADP Gaming, the, Tristan, the, the Jinx had backed, had gotten the BF Sword, so he was able to put out a lot of damage, um, as well as Renekton had his pickaxe, he had a longsword, so he was doing a lot of damage too. So, I mean, they just picked the right time to fight, the right time to go for that drag. They had good uh, item advantages there. So... Uh, as far as the game's going again, we already see that uh, Fellowship, no, sorry, ADP Gaming has picked up the two sweeping lenses again. So again, focusing a lot on that vision as the jungler does pick up a pink ward and a green ward as they do have some more pink wards in the inventory there. So uh, ADP Gaming, just seeing that as a common theme with them just having a lot of vision priority. Both teams look like they're taking a lot of priority on vision, starting to build that side stone. You do see Zed also picking up a ward, but ADP Gaming, all three games so far, have had a lot of control onto that vision. I don't think they're going to run the double side stone that they usually do, as they have Diana, who's going to want to go more AP, but she is picking up wards on the side. It looks like they might be able to catch the Zed out here. He looks like he's trying to roam bot, but he is spotted out by Lola's Law there. Top lane, still kind of a wet noodle fight. Renekton keeping hard blow in check, pushing him out there. He wasn't able to make it to the bot fight last time, and I think that really gave ADP the advantage. Great team play. Spider Phenom definitely willing to give up a lot of farm in his lane just to help his team, and it really, he's very good at controlling his own lane. We'll have to see if Braum's going to put down some damage here. They do destroy the pink ward. Braum dropping down another ward just to make sure they don't get flanked there by the Diana. So the Orianna is going towards the Morella Nomicon, going to get some uh, CDR there as well as get some mana regen. So she's going to be able to move the ball around a lot, going for a lot of utility here. But I mean, she's still going to be putting out a lot of damage. So that's something they have to worry about going into this late game here. As uh, I mean, they're going to have to worry about the split pushing threat, but I mean, they don't want to get caught out at a man disadvantage and lose a fight in the mid lane just because they have some split pushers out that side there. So they're going to have to play this game very safe here. Zed's going with another set of long swords there. So that's going to be going uh, towards more just a lot of AD here. He's not going to worry about any kind of defense. Um, 
Maybe go with the Hexer. Oh, as Renekton's getting caught out here, actually. He does run on an explosive cast, and they do pick up the kill as Vlad comes down from the top lane. He flashes over the wall. Deathmark onto the flame flare X. We're going to have to see if he can get out. The double shuriken does pick up the kill onto Lola's Law. They're chasing down Flamefire X. The cask does come out the slow, and Vlad picks up the kill. Great 3 for 0 there by Fellowship of the Nerds, pulling themselves back into the lead. Yeah, um, not too sure what had gotten gone on there. It looked like Spider, Spider Phenom had just gotten caught out in the river, dove over the Baron Wall, but was spotted out there by uh, the Grogus. And so, just one by one, they'd gotten chunked out, pushed down, and killed there. So, great collapse from uh, Fellowship of the Nerds in order to, you know, really capitalize on the mispositioning there. Um, yeah, the Zed picking up a lot of uh, a lot of gold here, so that's gonna really uh, accelerate this split pushing threat that he's gonna have here. As uh, the Vlad is also picking up the uh, Hex Tech, so he's gonna be going towards that uh, Will of the Ancients, just getting the spell vamp, and um, yeah, accelerating his own split push. Picking up that kill and the two assists definitely makes up for Spider Phenom's teleport, giving him that extra lane advantage. I'm really hoping the Vlad stays at just the Hex Tech Revolver. With the new Will of the Ancients, it actually only takes a percentage of the damage you deal, so it's not ideal to rush it as your first item. The Spell Vamp is definitely good enough because you get just a flat Spell Vamp from your Hextech Revolver. Looks like he's going to start building towards the Hunting Guys to get through there and then probably go into the Zhonyas. He is about to hit that level 9 spike where his max sustain is going to be there. He should be able to max match the Renekton in lane. It looks like Renekton might start building towards the Hex Drinker. He might just get boots and build towards that Titanic Hydra. But with Dragon coming up in a minute 18, I'm sure we're about to see, we're going to see a team fight if both top laners can keep their TPs available. Unfortunately, they weren't able to clear out the ward in the bot lane. So that one is going to stay in the tri brush, giving some more vision to ADP Gaming. As, uh,. Yeah, there's still a lot of wards. They got a couple pink wards out there, but it looks like uh, Fellowship of the Nerds is actually able to match this vision game that ADP Gaming has been really uh, going about aggressively. Uh, they do pick up some sweepers of their own, not on the jungler, but on the mid laner. Uh, still uh, two of those and three yellow trinkets just kind of matching that. So I feel like it's going to be pretty even in terms of like which team is going to be getting the adv vision advantage, where as before, we've kind of seen that it's been one-sided. As an aggressive flash from Gamer Dakota as he's going in on Baby Trog. Uh, Baby Trog is kind of low on uh, escape pass here. The flash is down. So Same with his hop. Tom Kench ult coming out here. So And we got a fight coming in. Rom does ult to try and push back Gamer Dakota. They don't have a turret. The exhaust comes down. Super Mega Death Rocket does pick up the kill. Diana is exhausted. Tom Kench eats her just to get a little more speed as we go mid lane. We're going to have to see if they get the push. They're not able to chase down Ch Cho's good. With Dragon coming up in 5 seconds, that could be a crucial kill and lead to a, a advantage in the next team fight. As we see Gragas and Harbo putting a lot of damage down. Renekton does have TP available. We're going to see Eggluosity taking a lot of damage, but he does have that great health. Ultimate use, Deathmark goes down, as well as a flat ulti. A lot of damage going down. Gamer Dakota is dead. We see Spider Phenom coming in from the back, but they also drop Eggluosity. Flame Flyer X goes down as well. And those are the nerds fighting the 4v4 and coming out with three kills. Spider Phenom, a little bit late on that TP. Like, he just wasn't quite in the fight. He was walking in towards it and then decided to back out there as it was already kind of lost in their favor. So, Fellowship of the Nerds is going to pick up the Dragon, so one for one tied there, as they also do turn that into a little bit of a gold advantage too, being up around 1,000 gold, as they do pick up a kill advantage here, and they're going to look towards the mid lane, as uh, they just wait for the wave right now, but they do have the man advantage, as well as they do have the Tristana, which is going to push down that tower pretty quick, but it looks like they're actually just going to back off of that. Um, and then, uh, we're going to see the uh, Vlad, he, like Blake said there, He's not going to go and finish the Will of the Ancients. He's actually going to go for some uh, magic pen there. He's going to pick up the haunting guys, and he's going to work towards that uh, the utility in that. So he's going to be able to help uh, the Grogus do a little bit more damage too. So um, And as well as that slow burn on there, that should uh, dissuade any kind of healing that the uh, ADP Gaming is going to be doing there. Flash of the Nerds doing a lot, and it's unfortunate. This Jinx is starting to get going. But with Zed being so fed, he's going to do a lot of damage. But you see the great body slam, three-man cast, back into the turret. Brom comes in, but a great shockwave. They might be able to turn this kill around. Flamefire X goes in, pulls him in. Zed going to try and turn the kill. Does 
get, pick up that kill, but 80p gaming picks up two kills on the side, but Jay Fraser with his ulti coming up soon, gonna go in. He does use Deathmark, does take down the Jinx, but he might go down himself. Tom Kench just gives him a taste, and that's a two for a three for two, sorry, in favor of ADP gaming. But Harbo gonna come in here and see if he can do a little more damage. He does get the three stacks. Will he be able to eat him though? He does have his taste acquired, does get the stun, eats him up. Oh, great stun, followed up by the command dissonance, and they take him down. Harbo maybe biting off a little more he can chew, and they get another turret out of it. Great play there by ADP gaming. So picking the, the right fight there is the Oriana ult did come out to really turn that, that great cask from the Grogus around. Uh, not a lot of follow up there as uh, he might have liked, but it was a great engage. So maybe not everyone on the same page as the Zed did come in later. Pick up the double kill. So, I mean, he's going to go for the, he has his Blade of the Rune King as well as the uh, the Brutalizer. And he's picking up uh, Null Magic Mantle. So might be going towards a, a Hex Drinker now. Maybe just to put up with the amount of uh, magic damage that is going to be coming out with the... Uh, the Oriana as well as the Diana so maybe just going for a little bit of defense there but yeah so it's really accelerating his game as he does have two of his core items built there very strong Zed hopefully the Oriana shield is gonna start being enough I think James is gonna have to build an early QSS to deal with that death mark although they are doing a lot more damage and I think she's dying before the death mark even goes off so I'm not sure if QSS really is the result or is the answer to this Zed at the moment he hasn't even started split pushing. Those of the nerds do pick themselves up a turret, however. We're going to have to wait and see in these team fights. I'm surprised that Tom Kench hasn't tried eating the Jinx. I do believe it makes you invulnerable while you're in there. I think it should negate the death mark from going off. But they have to find some kind of answer to this Zed to keep game Gamer Dakota alive in these team fights because he's a primary source of damage and he is going down. Flying away like a bird. They do catch the Brahm out here. Will Unbreakable, it does not block the Jinx. Someone else used an ability before it could be blocked, and they do take him down. However, Vlad in the top lane split pushing, getting this turret. We're going to have to see if ADP Gaming is just going to decide to go mid or just let both their sideways be completely pushed in. So Vlad taking what he can there. Uh, he decided to go for the turret rather than back. Smart decision there. You wouldn't have been able to do too much, I don't think. But the TP is coming in now. Great cast. Wow. The cast not going to all back. We do see the Vladimir come in here. We're going to have to see Shockwave is available just now doesn't happen to use it but in all this time fellowship and the nerds they have baby trucks foot pushing bot lane he might be able to take that turret but tom kench you hanging out over there going to all gonna try and hold down the fort keep it alive we see bozegard keeping an eye hard blow coming in from the side flame player x very low they'll have to be careful the vlad ulti is used they do get the slow and cast the command shockwave goes out but it's not enough as the vlad ulti pop Deathmark is available. We'll see. Zed does pop it. They do the damage and pick up two kills. And Fellowship of the Nerds really capitalizing on these missed plays here. They do get the slow onto the Tom Kench, but nothing else will turn from it. However, Eglilocity looking for Jay Fraser, trying to get a taste acquired to maybe try and nom him. So this is what we were talking about before with a split push threat coming out from Fellowship of the Nerds. I mean, it doesn't have to be Zed. Zed was with the team. They have a Tristana. She's going to be pushing... Uh, those turrets down extremely fast and just because I mean that Tom Kench probably was the reason that that turret was saved just because he was able to grab his AD carry and rip right up to that top, that bot lane turret so that was probably the only reason it got saved there I mean Tristana would have gotten that so they got to be careful because that Tom Kench alt isn't always going to be off cooldown as uh, I mean it's on cooldown now so whether they can get those lanes rolling again Vlad is in the bot he's pushing up those waves but he's going to be backing now just uh, realizing that he might be in a bit of a risky situation being that far up without that little of vision only the one ward on their side there it's really going to be up to the Diana to try and burst out either the Vladimir or the Tristana before anyone else can put down the damage. Diana being 0-4-3, not being the most effective pick so far. They only have Renekton as a front line. They're used to seeing this team, I guess as they also have a velocity on the Tom Kench. Used to seeing the triple kind of tank as well as the top DPS from Spider Phenom. Tom Kench does pick up the Aegis, going to help out with that Vladimir who is dealing a lot of AoE damage coming out as well as the Gragas. We're gonna have to see at this dragon fight who can find the better engage as that has been really what's dictating these team fights so far. Yeah so Renekton I mean he still decided to go and build that TM at for the damage but it might have sacrificed so much on the defensive stats not being exactly the best front line here. 
Yeah, I'm doing the dragon dance now. We're gonna have to see who's gonna try and go in. Anglosity does get body slammed. The rest of the team, they do throw down the explosive charge and the cask. That's about it. Kind of poking back and forth. A lot of damage down onto Anglosity, onto that Tom Kench. But the rest of them go in. They do get the stun. They come in through the choke. And is Vladimir ulti coming out. Great shockwave down. The bomb ult to disengage. We're gonna have to see the death mark down onto Gamer Dakota. He does go down. Is it enough? We're going to have to see Tom Kench being able to pick up the kill with Orianna. But they're chasing the rest. He goes down to Cho's good. Are they going to be able to get Lawless? Lol, no. Spider Phenom also just sneaking out of there. A 3 for 1 for Fellowship of the Nerds. On, they were trying to flank there around and it just wasn't successful. So yeah, if we look at the waves here, I mean, at least uh, ADP Gaming has that top wave pushing extremely hard into uh, Fellowship of the Nerds turret there on the top side. But uh, Fellowship of the Nerds, they pick up the dragon. Vlad's going to go to that bot lane, going to get that wave pushing up as a uh, good fight all around from Fellowship of the Nerds. They really stayed in there, even though there was a very good Orianna all to pick up of quite a few members there. But uh, Zed, again, diving that back line, blowing up that Jinx, 6-3-6. and six. He's going to be doing that consistently. There has to be a way to get him out of there. Uh, he's just going to be a consistent threat unless he ends up going and split pushing, which and then it might be the only chance that they can take a really good fight off of that. So we're going to have to wait and see how that one ends up there. So Diana, 0-5-3. She's getting quite a bit farther behind as the Grogs is 4-1 and one right now. I'm definitely not sold on this Diana pick. I feel like... Fight Flame Fire has played very well on tanky junglers. Uh, they tried to go with more damage, and it's not seeming to work out. They had they did very good early game picking up those plays, but their team comp they're just not finding those picks that they really want. Lol is lol has still, however, had some great ultimates on the Orianna, kind of putting people into their place. But we're gonna have to see this next team fight coming up. Baron is very much a possibility. You have Tristana almost finishing her Phantom Dancer here. Jinx almost at the same point. Hopefully, we're going to see some good team fights here still going both ways. And hopefully, Fellowship of the Nerds hasn't quite gone too far ahead that they're just going to steamroll the rest of this game. So, Fellowship of the Nerds having quite a bit of a vision advantage, having a couple pink wards in the jungle as well as. Uh uh, in their own jungle, just some defensive ones there. Uh, so this is the first time we've really seen ADP Gaming be challenged in the Vision game, but it looks like we might have a fight here by the Raptor camp as uh, the Grog is, is coming in looking for a good barrel. Yeah, Eglosity taking a lot of damage before these team fights. He keeps kind of getting poked out, and then they try and engage, and even with that Grey Hell uh, shield, he's not really being effective as he could be. Great stun there by the Renekton, but they're taking so much return damage. I don't know if they're going to be able to do this. Slowly getting poked off a of Baron, they're going to slowly just keep firing damage back and forth, back and forth, threaten the Baron, move back to the turret. Fellowship of the Nerds have both of their side waves slowly pushing in, and eventually ADP is going to have to do something about it. So yeah, just really uh, doing doing a little bit of a dance here in the mid lane, uh, not wanting one team to give up any ground as uh, I mean, Fellowship of the Nerds is going to want to be pushing up to that mid tower, but ADP Gaming just not wanting to let them get that kind of advantage. As it looks like Fellowship of the Nerds is going to be pinging out that top tower as there's a humongous wave going up there with them, so they're actually just going to be able to grab that as the Tristana and the Braum are going to go bot just to have a good split going here. I don't know exactly what uh, ADP Gaming is going to do to be able to answer this back. Uh, I don't know if they have the engage, but Diana's there to help answer, but uh, Tom Kench alt coming in on the top side. They do go in onto the Orianna. The Deathmark has not been used here. Tom Kench definitely going top to try and help out. Deathmark is coming out. A ton of damage coming down. Renekton trying to return the kill. Spider Phenom going to keep trying to chase. He does get the dash and the Ruthless Predator picking up the kill. Tom Kench still a lot of health. Here's Flamefire. He tries to put down the damage onto the Vladimir. Will he be able to nom him? He does use the smite to take him down. Jinx by herself holding the bot lane as Spider Phenom chases down Bozgoed. Can he get the kill? The one dash, the Tiamat, the stun, uses the Q and takes him down. Overall, a three for one trade. Pretty well played there by ADP Gaming. ADP Gaming really uh, stepped up there. They had people in all the right spots. Jinx was able to defend that turret by herself. So eight, uh, Baby Trog and... Uh, the Braum were in the bot lane, but they just weren't able to really get anything out of that. They pushed the wave up, sure, but they didn't get the, you know, the tower like they were hoping to with the Tristana as well as the ZZ going top. They were just able to rotate as well, follow that up, and have a man advantage in that fight. 
She's having a lot of wave clear. It is very hard for them to try and push into that turret with her just using her rockets. Gonna be able to just slowly just clear, 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 clear. Now we see Oriana finally finishing the Morella Namakam. Does have the Zhonyas to try and negate if she gets death marked. That's one less target Zed can go on. Diana and Oriana have them completed. Jinx gonna have to try and find some way to save herself from that death mark. They do have face of the mountain and locket to try and protect her through it. Command protect. Not sure it's enough at this point that Zed is doing a ton of damage. Uh, basically any target he's marked so far has gone down. So if we also look at the CS discrepancies between the teams here, Tristana's up quite a bit of CS on the Jinx, resulting in that item advantage. She's finished off the Phantom Dancer, where Jinx is still just sitting on that Zeal, as well as a sec uh, another Longsword there. Uh, not sure where that might have come from, maybe just a uh, purchase from beforehand in the early laning phase. But uh, so Tristana's going to have a little bit of an item advantage here, resulting in just a further gold gap uh, between the teams, 41,000 28. Uh, doing a little bit of damage here from the Renekton. We do see Fellowship of the Nurse slowly collapsing here on 280p game. The Brahm multi is used, just catches the Tom Kench. He is forced to flash away. Oh, the Shockwave only hitting one person. Lol is Lol in a lot of trouble. He has to use the Zanya as they go into Gamer Dakota. He does have Deathmark, is not able to return the kill, however. Vlad 2v1 in the background. Pops his ulti, doing a lot of damage. Unable to take anyone down. Flame is. Fire is able to pick up that kill alongside Tom Kench. Charles is good though, and Bo's good. Coming in from the backside, Baby Chalk putting down a lot of damage. The procs of the Braum passive is popped, keeping the Renekton off of him. Jay Frazier picking up the kill onto the Tom Kench. However, Tristan with that face of the mountain does get away. Great explosive cast to knock him away. Diana trying to pick up another kill. Does get Joe Frazier, but Flamefire gonna go down. Also somehow gets a kill. Picks up the kill with a Q, I do believe, onto the Tristana, making it a 5 for 3 exchange. They're going to head towards Dragon, but we're going to have to see if LOL is good and Gamer Dakota can get there in time. Yeah, that was a pretty pretty extended fight there as the Vlad was just tanking up that a uh, couple people in the back line there as the Zed did dive onto the Jinx and the Orianna and really pick those up quite quick as he did go low himself but able to get out the damage, pop that death mark on the Jinx and just delete her out of the fight. So he's 10, 5, and 7 now. He's got some good core items. Um, so uh, Jinx, oh, shooting the rocket there. Not quite going to steal a dragon but might get Braum here on the backside and she does as uh, the Gragas is just going to be able to body slam out of the pit but Braum not quite in getting out with him. Gamer Dakota got some serious stones on that guy, using that flash offensively repeatedly to pick up kills and not saving it for when Zed goes on to him. Gotta give him props for that, not afraid of that Zed, even though he is popping him quite early. We'll have to see. Still no answer to this death mark. The QSS not picked up. Hopefully Gamer Dakota maybe going to finish that Phantom Dancer and go into a defensive item, as it is definitely going to be needed. He's probably the only target that is worth using the Zed Mark on at this point. He needs some kind of defensive item to negate that damage. Tom Kench, though, I'm rather impressed. We're working out really good this game. This Vladimir really starting to scale, finally getting the Leandres, got the Zanyas. I don't think Renekton at this point is going to be able to deal with them. We're going to have to see if they start running that 1-3-1 I was talking about earlier, if they're just going to stay grouped because that is also working for them. He bows good, does land the body slam, gets the explosive cast onto Egg Velocity. Shockwave only catching bows good. They do get the Flame Chompers, a lot of damage being returned. Braum multi missing, just trying to disengage. Diana does go in with the Lunar Rush, pulls them in. Does pop Zanyas. They do get the stun onto Spider Phenom. Alti is still available. Diana going back in, but is popped. So far, that's two kills for Fellowship of the Nerds. They are looking for more, or they might just take the turret here. Backing off slowly, picking up two free kills. Jinx putting down a lot of damage from Gamer Dakota, but not enough to pick up a kill. So with that, they got the jungler, they got the support with the global, so they might just rotate towards the Baron here, but it looks like they're just going to hover mid lane as Zed's actually going to go up to the top lane and start that, that split push like we were talking about before. Um, also, it looks like they're just going to deny some of the jungle from ADP Gaming. Going to take the blue buff, uh, but it's already gone, so not a lot they can do there. Just going to pick up some vision with the uh, Scuttle Crabs. And uh, Zed's just going to keep going there, but they might answer as he doesn't have a lot of vision in the tops of the jungle. Um, going to have to see, but they are rotating bots, so they are going to try and pick up that turret, put some more pressure on there, give, uh, give Zed a little bit of room to breathe as he does back off, though, um, looking to just maybe back and pick up some items here. 
James finally hitting the Phantom Dancer IE, gonna be pumping out a lot of damage at this point. Tristana, however, getting towards that last Whisper, starting to get that max range, being level 14, farming very well. We're gonna have to see here, both no really objectives up. Fellowship of the Nerds probably gonna start pushing for turrets. They are really, Fellowship of the Nerds doing very well with wave management. When they move to a lane, they usually always have the other lanes pushing in their favor. Might not be pushing right away, but getting that slow push, forcing ADP Gaming to either engage or move on to another lane to try and push that one. Mm -hmm. So we got both the teams kind of just hovering around, around mid here. Uh, Fellowship of the Nerds might be looking for a fight as if they take that they can go for the Baron. Make that split push even more effective as Braum does get the concussive blows stacked onto the Zoriana. Deathmark is used here. Or sorry, no it was not. Just a Living Shadow. The Vlad forced to use his Zanyas. Very questionable Zanyas there. But keeping himself alive. Just trying not to take a lot of damage. Kind of a big team fight, which turned into nothing. A lot of ultis used, or sorry, a lot of ultis not used. We have a lot still up. Everyone's still able to go. We're gonna have to see if they choose to fight again, or they're just gonna try and keep pressure mid lane, try and get this turret here. As Zed heads towards the top lane, the rest of his team follows. They might try and bait a Baron here, pull ADP Gaming into there. As Spider Phenom only with half health. Yeah, uh, Fellowship of the Nerds is going to be pinging out that bush as they're hoping to cap catch out Kent. Angluosity just oh, gets oh, oh, oh. destroyed. 100 to 0. Never <laughs> go near those brushes. And you see the level 5 Zed Mastery flare coming out there. Popping it up, letting them know. They do start the Baron, however. Very scary for ADP Gaming. We're going to have to see if they're going to try and contest it or just give it up. Looks like they might start backing away. Giving up Baron for free, which is definitely not what they want with this kind of team comp. They're going to be able to 1-3-1, one, one, have all three lanes pushing. So, um, I mean, ADP Gaming, maybe they should have left Kench on the bench here as he does get deleted from that. Uh, it's really going to result in a, a push advantage here as they pick up the Baron. They're going to have those Baron-empowered minions. They're really going to take this tower really fast with the Tristana, with the Zed. So, I don't know if... Uh, ADP Gaming is going to have an answer for this as it looks like Fellowship of the Nerds is going to rotate towards that bot, uh, bot lane turret there. Um, wondering if they're even going to try and get the wave going or if they might just tank it with the Grogus and the Braum there. Again, that Mastery Flare coming out there just for swag. Said, yeah, doing a lot of his w lot of work for his team. I'm very surprised they haven't put anyone split pushing, but honestly, I don't think they need to. They've been doing very well at just grouping and fighting, and here's Tom Kench trying to stop the Bromby. Don't think he was expecting the rest of his team to be there. They turn around, and they might even just keep pushing for the fight here. Vlad looking, but not going to find anything. Just going to steal a blue away from the Oriana. They're going to be able to pick another turret for free here. So, Fellowship of the Nerds, again, staying on top of that vision game. You can see just a lot of blue wards as there as Braum pops the ult, and they're going to go on the Diana here. Putting in a lot of damage. She does still have Zonis available. The command or protect is on there. Gets exhausted, forced to flash. Zed sniffs himself a kill. He's looking, but we're going to have to see if he can find it. Maybe just keeping them off as Tristana doing what she does best destroying that turret taking it down no problem but that is a huge wave for ADP pushing in the top lane as dragon does come back up we're gonna have to see fellowship of the nerds possibly gonna pick up their fourth dragon of the game uncontested as Zed's waiting for his next prey to come into the wrong spot ADP gaming not really able to contest that dragon at all as I mean they're pushed pretty far into their own base there and uh, the Zed just kind of zoning them out and keeping them trapped in their own base at the threat of just assassinating someone as the death mark was still alive and he did pick up the hex, hex drinker now so it's going to be a little more resistance towards that Oriana towards the Diana so the amount of damage they're actually going to be able to do towards the Zed is you know, getting lower as he does lifesteal, as he does just have the Hex Drinker shield to help him out there. And yeah, they're really just pushing all their advantages further and further as that gold lead is now at 9,000. Gamer Dakota still opting for damage, going for pickaxe and vamp scepter. At this point, must just be pretty flustered. Has only died four times, however, even with that fed Zed, but not looking too concerned with that Zed death mark. Bra or Tom Kench doing a pretty good job so far at keeping them alive, but that Tristana has been farming a lot. As you see, she has almost oh, 70 CS up 
a full last whisper starting to build towards that GA and as she hits level 16 she's almost max range and gonna be just poking people from afar as you have that Vlad also getting very tanky finishing that abyssal doesn't even have the water yet doesn't need it still just taking advantage of that 15% spell vamp they might look for a tower dive here Spider Phenom does get hit by Winter's Bite Tristana popping that turret the Brawl multi does come out, catching three of them, followed in by the Body Slam and the Vlad ulti. Go doing a lot of damage command, Shockwave does it three of them. Super Mega Death Rocket is still available, Jinx is very low. Deathmark used on the Jinx, does pop the Orion as well. No, she uses Zhonya's, but she's going to get smacked. The Flare coming out, Zed just styling on people right now. Spider Phenom just hopping away, has the crutches out. It looks like Fellowship of the Nerds going to just start wrecking this base. Baron has fallen off, but that doesn't matter when you have a Tristana on your side. Yeah, this Shockblade Zed just really shocking everyone on the team. I don't know if they were quite ready for this uh, pick to really do quite as much work as it had done before. 13, 5, and 10 uh, with 215 CS. I mean, the whole team's really picking up weight, too. This Tristana is almost 100 CS up on anybody else on her team as they're going to be pushing in on the inhibitors now. I don't think ADP Gaming's got an answer for this as they're just going to walk into the base, get the second inhib, walk out. Uh, not really sure where they might be going now. Probably just to get those bot lane uh, waves pushing there as that's the only envision. Or it looks like they might just bait a fight out. Body slam going up. Uh, explosive cast hitting three members into the fight. Spider and Phenom trying to get down some damage as they do drop the Tristana with a ton of damage in the back line though. Shockline Zed going in with the Gragas and they completely destroyed the Jinx. Uh, Vladimir picking up the kill there on the Diana. We're going to have to see Spider Phenom getting hit trying to get into his base but he does double dash out. Slice and dice through his own through the enemy team to get through there. And it looks like they might just try and push in even without the Tristana. Maybe being a little aggressive here by fellowship of the nerds but they don't really care they really want to end this game Zed he's just going to go for that bot lane turret get those pushed out as the rest of the teams keeping him distracted held into the base in mid there uh, so he's gonna get there he, they want to get that third in him just have the whole entire base open ripe for the picking um, Vlad 7 3 and 14 kind of the unsung hero that's just putting out a lot of consistent damage not something you typically see so much in the in the top lane meta now more of like tanks stuff like that uh, he's really pulling it together here being an AP threat where they did go with the Zed and he does go with the scimitar now and able to uh, get away from lots of that CC that they would uh, lock up the Zed so he can dive in get in very out um, as well as Gragas also doing a lot of work a lot of work with those casks uh, it's really splitting up the fight uh, separating the team kind of splitting them up and letting the Zed and the Tristana just pick off uh, anybody they want on the outskirts of that so just a lot of props a lot of good teamwork from Fellowship of the Nerds yeah, it looks like they're not too concerned at trying to get that bottom turret right now they might either just push all the super creeps into the base go get Baron and then go finish the game or they might just group and finish. They honestly have the item advantage. They definitely have shown their prowess in team fighting. I wouldn't be surprised if they just went and they might just camp Death Bush here. We're going to see if Eggluosity decides to take a stroll into that bush again. Could be very disastrous for him. But it looks like ADP is going to opt to go push the bot wave down as they start prepping to do the Baron on the side of Fellowship of the Nerds. Oh, Zed using the Death Mark. However, the Zhonya's is used. Jinx putting down a decent amount of damage, but they aren't able to kill him. And this is what I was talking about, the split push. No one really being able to handle the Zed, but pulling a lot of attention bot lane as that is the only turret and inhibitor standing. They might be able to win this team fight 4v5, honestly, with how strong this Tristana is. We're going to have to see. They do start the Baron, but Zed is there. He has made his way down. Tom Kench looking to try and stop them, put a little bit of damage down, but they are shredding this Baron. Eggluosity flashing in with that tongue, smacking some people around. He does have the acquired the taste, but a great explosive cast to knock the Jinx and the Diana towards it. We're going to have to see if Diana can get in there and steal it. Diana with the Baron steal, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Flamefire very low in there. Both Zhonya's used. Krog is picking up the kill on Spider Phenom. They pick up the Orianna. That's a clean ace. The hero Baron steal but it is definitely not enough to keep ADP Gaming in the game. Vlad TP is going to take that last Nexus turret. The rest of the team is going to come in. That is game. 
15, 5, and 12 Zed. Really just doing a ton of damage. Uh, able to finish off the game there. Even though the Diana did steal the Baron, I don't think that was the number one priority for Fellowship of the Nerds. I think they just wanted to win lo one last team fight, finish off the game cleanly there, which they ended up pulling off. Excellent coordination by Fellowship of the Nerds. ADP played very well, though. Um, that is, however... Putting Fellowship of the Nerds in first place for their bracket. ADP finishing second. Both teams moving on to the second week of qualifiers. Um, the Tomorrow's stream will be up tomorrow. I don't believe there will be any casting, unfortunately, as we do not have the manpower for it. Any tiebreakers that are left after tomorrow with the brackets, the games will be played on Thursday. We have brackets F, G, and H tomorrow that will be coming out. Uh, we want to thank everyone for coming out today, supporting the stream. We really appreciate everyone coming out. We'd like to thank our sponsors, HyperX, Widemouth Media, and Matrix Gaming. Feel free to check them out on their websites. Great people. We really appreciate the support they've had. Just appreciate everyone else, and thanks to everyone behind the scenes. Yeah, thanks again, guys, for just stopping by. Uh, we'd like to, uh, you know, guys you can check us out on facebook check us out on twitter as well as we have a patreon page if you guys wouldn't mind uh so yeah uh have a good night guys and make sure you tune in tomorrow keep it cool yo check this out